Okay. Well, welcome everybody. Welcome everybody on social media. Glad you've joined us today. And uh, I'm going to do something different here. I have a message here that's thoroughly scriptural. I worked on it all day yesterday and the day before, and the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. We're supposed to do something else. So we'll just follow the Holy Spirit. <laughs> that's good, isn't it? It pays to follow Him. It pays to follow Him. So I don't have any notes here. We'll just follow the Holy Spirit. All right. Is that all right? Uh, you know, you can be turning... <laughs> <laughs> you can be turning uh, to Acts, the 20th chapter. I'm sorry. Let's go to John, the 20th chapter. I was looking at Acts, but I, I meant John, the 20th chapter. You know, as you uh, as you look at at at. Uh, uh, how do I want to say this? Um, as you study cults, C-U-L-T-S, you know. Uh, versus true Christianity, the debate is over who Jesus is. Correct? And so cults will tell you that he is other than who he really is. That he's, you know, a created being himself or whatever. But we know Jesus is the second member of the Trinity. He's the creator. And so, so what distinguishes Christianity from a cult is who Jesus is. But once you come over into, into true Christianity and you start looking at the different denominations, you know what I'm talking about? The different denominations, Baptists, Pentecostal, Methodist, Lutheran, and so on. The debate there isn't over who Jesus is, even Catholicism. You know, the Catholics do have the Jesus of the Bible. Now, they have a whole lot of other things they shouldn't have. You understand that? But, but when you come into true Christianity, the debate isn't over who Jesus is. It's over who the Holy Spirit is and his ministry. You understand that? For example, let's compare the Baptists, which I was raised in the Baptist church, and the Pentecostals. Okay? So I was raised in the Baptist church, and the Baptists believe in the Holy Spirit, but they don't believe in His full ministry. You understand what I'm saying? But you come over among the Charismatics or the Pentecostals, you see, the Baptists and the Pentecostals, Charismatics, have the same Jesus. But they differ on who the Holy Spirit is. Not, not so much who He is, but what He does. Do you get what I just said? So when you compare cults with true Christianity, it's over who Jesus is. But when you come into true Christianity and you start looking at the different denominations, it's not over who Jesus is, it's over who the Holy Spirit is, but not really who He is, but what He does, His ministry. You understand that? And the best comparison is the Baptists and the Charismatics or the Pentecostals. The Baptists believe in the work of the Holy Spirit in salvation, but they don't believe, the Baptists don't believe, now I can talk about this because like I said, I was raised in the Baptist church, they don't believe in the baptism of, of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you know, and the different uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Baptists don't hold to that. They say that's all passed away. But you come over among the Pentecostals, Charismatics, and see, which, which that's what happened to me. I was in the Baptist church and I was born again. I was born of the Spirit of God. I had the Holy Spirit in me, but I wasn't, I wasn't satisfied there in the Baptist church. I knew there was something more. I just sensed there was something more. There was something more. I said there was something more. There was something more. I, there, there was a power missing. Now, now, there was just something missing. And I didn't know what it was at the time. But in the process of time, the Holy Spirit led me, you know, and, and, and directed me. And uh, I, I came into the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you see. Thank God for it. And it opened up a whole new vistas to me. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and a power that I'd never had experienced before. And there was a, then that hole was filled when I came into the baptism with the Holy Spirit. 
You understand that? And I think many of you can relate to that. So you see denominations, you know, Baptist, Pentecostal, Lutheran, Methodist, and so on. They, there's no debate over who Jesus is. It's over who, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You understand that? You realize that? And, uh, and I've got news for you. The Holy Spirit, has, his ministry hasn't passed away and didn't die out with the last apostle. As so many people think, you know. And so with that in mind, I just feel impressed of the Spirit to say some things about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Ghost here today. And it'll be a good refresher for you all and it'll be good for some people on social media that may have never heard this before. So if you would go to John the 20th chapter after Jesus is raised from the dead. Notice he says here, he's, he's with his, his disciples and in verse 22, uh, when he had said this, so, so he had ministered some things to him. He breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Now, it's interesting. This is right after Jesus has been raised from the dead. And now he says to his disciples in John 20, 22, he breathes. He breathes on them. And says, receive the Holy Spirit. Now, it's interesting as I've done a little study on this, on this breathing. You see God breathing in the Garden of Eden. And he breathed, remember he formed man of the dust of the ground. And then he, whew, he breathed into him the breath of life and man was born. And now... We see Jesus, who is God, the second member of the Trinity. He's breathing again. And man is born again. So when God breathes the first time, man is born, if you will, in the Garden of Eden. And when God breathes the second time, man is born again. And this is where the disciples got born again. Now, of course, they were saved all right before Jesus died on the cross and was raised from the dead. They were saved just like all the saints of the Old Testament, like Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness, you know, so if they would have died before this, they would have went to Abraham's bosom. You understand that, paradise. But this is, this is where they got born again. He tells them to receive the Holy Spirit. He breathes on them and this is where they get born again. This is really where the church was was, was, was actually born right here. Well, actually, the church was born when Jesus was raised, raised from the dead, you know. And the Bible calls him the firstborn among many brethren. But then here you see, he breathes on him and says, receive the Holy Spirit. But now it's interesting. Now, these, these fellows already have the, the, the Holy Spirit. They're born again. The Bible says, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. So you have to have the Holy Spirit to, to, to be born again, to go to heaven. Now, it's, now let me say this. Now, now, they could have stopped right here, right here. After Jesus breathed on them, they received the Holy Spirit. They could have stopped right here. They were born again. They're going to make heaven. Can you say amen to that? Yeah. They could have stopped right there. They, right here, they could have stopped right here. Right here, they're in the Baptist church, if you will. Okay. Right here, they're in the Baptist church. They could have stopped right there and made heaven. You understand that? See, see, you have to be born of the Holy Spirit, not baptized with the Spirit to make heaven. You have to be born of the Spirit, not baptized with the Spirit. There's a difference between being born of the Spirit and baptized with the Spirit. You have to be born of the Spirit to make heaven. And, and that right here is what happened. These, these, these disciples were born of the Spirit. You understand that? But it's interesting. He says to the same group of people, if you follow it through and go to Acts, the first chapter, and uh, the fourth verse, now it, this just picks up where after he breathes on them, he says to them, being assembled together with them, he commanded them. This is Acts 1, 4. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, 
but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be what? Baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now it's interesting, they just received the Holy Spirit and now he's talking to them about being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Can you see there's a difference between being born of the Spirit and being baptized with the Spirit? And you know, the Holy Spirit, the water is, is a type of the Holy Spirit. And I've used this example for years. But you see, if I take this right here and I... That's expired seven years ago. No, no, I, no, no, I'm just teasing. But see, I just took a drink of this, didn't I? And, and I've got water in me, do, do I not? That's like the new birth. You got water in you. You're, you. The Holy Ghost is in you. But would you say there's a difference between this and, and taking a drink and dumping it on my head or jumping in a swimming pool? Total, total, total different. Two, it's water's involved in both, but total different experiences, you see. And so he just breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. So they're born again. But then he says to Terry there. He says, uh, true, John baptized with water. You'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And, uh, and then if you go on to verse 7, and he said to them, uh, it is not for you to know the times and seasons and all that, but verse 8, but you shall receive, now here it is, you shall receive what? Power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So you see, there's that power. There's that power I was missing in the Baptist church. Now, thank God for the Baptists. I'm still kind of a Baptist at heart. Thank God for the Baptists. They get a lot of people saved. Thank God for it. But see, that's, there's that power. That's what I was missing in the Baptist church. I was missing that power. So I came over among the charismatics. See, I got baptized with the Holy Spirit and I came over among the charismatics, you see. And uh, with the Holy Ghost comes power. And also, we'll see this as we go, but, but I want to say this. You know, people a lot of times talk about the initial evidence of being baptized with the Holy Ghost is speaking with tongues. And, and, I, and I, don't, I, I do agree with that, but I think there's a, 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 an, a, an initial evidence before speaking in tongues. I think so much ev uh, emphasis has, put up, has been put on the tongues as the initial evidence, but I think there's an evidence even before that. Notice it's right here in verse 8. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit's come upon you, and you shall be what? You shall be witnesses. witnesses. I think that's really... The first evidence of being baptized with the, with the Holy Ghost, with power, that, that there's power comes with it. And you're empowered for service to be a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. You understand that? Yes. And I think that's really where the emphasis ought to set, more so than on the tongues. But I believe in the tongues. We'll see that as we go. So, these, so, so he said here, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit's come on you and you'll be witnesses and so on and so forth. Now... If you go over to Acts, the second chapter, we'll see the fulfillment of what Jesus was talking about because there was 120 that were tarrying or waiting there in the upper room to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And as you study scripture, this is the only time that that tarrying or waiting that someone needed to wait to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You don't have to wait anymore. Once you get born again, you can be baptized in the Holy Ghost immediately, you see. You understand that? So notice here uh, in Acts, the second chapter, when the day of Pentecost is fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues. Now, here's the tongues as of fire. And one sat on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Thank God for, uh, for the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And they were filled with the Spirit and then they did speak with other tongues. And now, of course, there's much debate over tongues. And uh, in fact, I feel impressed of the Spirit of God over the next several Sundays. I think we just need to delve into the Holy Ghost and talk about the Holy Ghost. You know, when you start talking about the Holy Ghost, power starts flowing. You understand that? 
And so we'll get into all the different different aspects of uh, we'll talk some about tongues and some of the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. I don't have time to get into all of it today, but uh, but tongues haven't passed away and there's a specific use for tongues. Do you know there's a public side to tongues and there's a private side to tongues? Did you know that? And that's one reason there's so much confusion about tongues is because people don't realize there's a private side to it and there's a public side to it, you see. And if you try to put the public rules on the private side or the private rules on the public side, you get into a mess. So over the next weeks, we'll talk about some of this stuff. I think, I think it'll be good and I think, the, I think the Lord wants some power to flow here. Amen. Amen. And so we'll just, we'll just do that over the next couple of weeks, uh, and just being led by the Spirit of God. But notice they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and so this, is, this was known as the day of Pentecost. And, uh, and, and notice, if you read on down in there, you see that what they were speaking in, in other tongues. They were speaking the wonderful works of God. They were speaking the wonderful works of God. And it ministered to those people who were there because the, the, the folks that had gathered, there was a diversity of people who had gathered there and they heard these disciples speaking in languages that, this, that the disciples could not have known. And, and these people who were visiting there heard them speaking the wonderful works of God and it caused 3,000 people to get saved. Glory to God. I tell you, when the Holy Ghost really does get moving and you're really flowing with Him, I tell you what, people will get saved. They really, really, they really, really, really will. Amen. They will. Because people are drawn to the power of the, of the Spirit, you see. And, and so, but we'll say more about tongues and, 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 and its operation uh, uh, as we go on. But, but notice, uh, they were filled with the Spirit and they spake with tongues or spoke with tongues, you see. Now, if you come over to, uh, let's go over to, uh, I guess it is Acts, the uh, eighth chapter. Acts, the eighth chapter. And uh, notice, if you would, uh, in, in, we'll uh, 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 pick up in verse 5. This is Philip, the evangelist. He started out as a table waiter. Now he's, he's an evangelist. And notice he went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. This is Acts 8, 5. And uh, he preached, notice he preached Christ to them. He's preaching the new birth. Okay. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there's great joy in the city. See that great joy follows the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And, uh, and so on and so forth. And then there was a saucer, you know, Simon, and, and apparently he got saved and so on and so forth. And, uh, but, but you see... A Samaria had received the word of God. And uh, notice here, let's go to verse 14, Acts 8, 14. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. Well, who is the word of God? Jesus is the word, right? Amen. So they received the gospel, the preaching of Jesus, because he preached Christ to them. Philip did. And when, and when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them who when they'd come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen on none of them. They had only been watered, the implication here is water baptized in the name of Jesus. Now it's interesting here, after Philip preached Christ to them, if that's all there was to it, and there, need be, there needed to be nothing else done, why did Peter and John go down there? You need to think about that because a lot of people think that once you're born again, there's no other experience after that. You're just born again. And thank God when you get born again, you're ready for heaven. That's you don't have to be baptized with the Holy Spirit to go to heaven. You only have to be born of the Spirit. And after Philip preached Christ to these people and they received the word of God, they're born again. They're ready for heaven. But if the, and that is the case. But then why did uh, Peter and John have to go down there? Well, it's very clear. They went down. Let's read this again. When the apostles, verse 14, who were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they'd come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Now, they already have the Holy Spirit in them. But notice here, for as yet he'd what? He'd fallen on none of them. Now that fallen on, that, that, as you study the scripture, that has to do with the baptism with the Spirit. See, they hadn't been baptized 
with the Holy Ghost. They had the Holy Ghost in them, but they hadn't had the Holy Ghost come on them with the baptism, you see. And they'd only been baptized with water, but not yet with the Holy Ghost. Now notice uh, verse 17, then they, Peter and John, laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now in this inc incident instance here, it does not specifically say, as you read on, that they spoke with tongues. But we do know that Simon wanted to pay Peter and John for the, to give him the ability to lay hands on people and have them filled with the Spirit. We do understand that. And then uh, Peter says to him, talks to Simon that his heart's wrong and, and all of that and he needs to repent. And he told him he had no part nor lot in this matter. And as you study in that word matter, it has to do with matter of utterance. So apparently... Uh, Simon had, had observed that when Peter and John laid hands on these people who were already born again, we, we can make implication that apparently they spoke with tongues. Thank God. There is an experience subsequent to salvation whereby you can be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Now, if we go over to Acts the 10th chapter, if you go to Acts the 10th chapter, uh, if you go to Acts the 10th chapter, Cornelius, the Gentile, he is uh, praying. He's a devout man, a good man. And, uh, but how many of you know your good works won't get you to heaven? Amen. And an angel, now he's one of the most devout men in the Bible. And the best example that will show us that good works won't save us because he's praying and an angel appears to him and says, send for Peter. He'll tell you what you must do. What do you mean what I must do? I'm a good man. I pray every day. I'm a good family man. I, I give to the poor. That's what the Bible says about him. But you know what? You can do all those things and still go to hell. You, you must be born again. And so the, the angel appears to him, says for Peter, tells him where Peter's at. So he goes and, and, and sends for Peter. And long story short, Peter shows up, you know. And, uh, and, and notice, if you would, it, well, in verse 34, Peter shows up and starts to preach. Then Peter opened his mouth. This is Acts 10, 34, and said, In the truth I perceive that God shows no partiality. And he goes on and he preaches Christ to them. Notice verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him, and, uh, and, and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, verse 39, and we are witnesses of all things which he uh, did, uh, both in the land of the Jews uh, and, and in Jerusalem whom they killed, hung him on a tree, and God raised him on the third day. Now that's the gospel, isn't it? Yes. He's preaching the gospel to him. And showed him openly, verse 41, now to all the people, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen uh, before by God, even us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. So he preached the gospel, the death, burial, and the resurrection. And so on. And now, now notice for the sake of time, notice if you would, uh, 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 well, let's just read on here. Verse uh, 42, and he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the, and the dead. To him, that's to Jesus, all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. And so there's the new birth, Right. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. Now, notice the Holy Spirit fell on them. Now, these people got what I call the one two punch. They got born again and baptized with the Holy Ghost. Bang, bang. That's really the best way to do it. Get born again, get, get, get born to the Spirit and baptized with the Spirit. Bang, bang. Just that, that's the best way to do it. Most people, you see, they'll get uh, they'll get born again, and then uh, sometime later they'll get baptized with the Holy Ghost. That's been my experience over the many years. That's what happened to me. I got born again as a young as a young boy in the Baptist church, and uh, and I didn't know too much, so I watched a certain televangelist every Saturday every Saturday night. 
And, uh, and, 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 and he, he preached that if you, uh, and his doctrine was, was wrong, you could follow his faith, but you couldn't follow his doctrine. And his doctrine was wrong. And his doctrine was that if you sinned during the week at all, you'd have to get saved again. And so every Saturday night, I'd pray to get saved again. And I prayed many, many different times to get saved again. And again and again and again. And finally, I got tired of it. Now, I was saved as a young boy. I believed on the Lord Jesus, but I got tired of it. So I went, I know right where I went. I went to a certain place back where I live. It's still there. It's a little cement pad outside the detached garage. I stood on that and I said to the Lord, I said, now, Lord, I'm praying this for the last time. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pray this anymore. I, I, and I, I received Jesus for the last time. And, and, and I said, I'm not going to ever doubt it or pray this prayer ever again. And Diane told me the years later when I was relating the story to her, she said, I got born again for the last time right there. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> well, you only need to be get born. You know, you only need to be get born again once. Now, that's not good English, but it's good theology. You only have to get saved once. But I didn't know that. You know, you get born again, born of the spirit of God. Naturally, you only get born once, don't you? Yes. Right? I mean, have any, has anybody ever had to go back in their mother's womb like Nicodemus thought and come out a second time? No. One time, right? Yep. And, and so I got, I got born, uh, born again as a young boy. Now, I do understand there is a, if you get away from God, I do understand that you need to, if you backslide, you need to repent and get back right with God. I understand that, you, you know. But that has to do with fellowship, not relationship, you see. But then, like I said, I was in the Baptist church and I was missing that power. And so I, I, heard, I heard about being baptized with the Holy Ghost. And so I, I prayed to God, uh, uh, actually I prayed to Jesus because Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. I ask him. Now, normally we pray to the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus. But, but you see, Jesus is the baptizer with the Holy Ghost. And I said, Jesus, fill me with the Holy Spirit. And now I'm expecting to speak in tongues and nothing comes out. And then I tried and nothing came out for weeks. Well, see, I thought the Holy... Now, I'm talking to a whole lot of people right now. That has been through this very thing. Get baptized with the Holy Ghost. And, and, and yes, we become witnesses, but there is that speaking with other tongues. Absolutely. But I didn't speak with other tongues right away. Now, this, is year, this is probably in my, in my late teens, early 20s. And, 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 and then I, I try, but nothing, nothing happens, you see. And so I go weeks like that. And then... I tried to speak in tongues out of my head. You can't speak in tongues out of your head. Because it's a spiritual thing. The Holy Spirit, he's in your spirit, not in your, in your brain. Now you speak foreign languages that you learn in school out of your head, you know. But you can't speak in tongues out of your head. It, comes, it flows, it bubbles out of your spirit. And I, and I tell you what, I just... I, I thought, well, you know, what's going on here? I can't speak with tongues. See, now, and so I said, I said, now, Holy Spirit, you know, I know I've been filled. I know you're in me. You've been, I've been filled with, with you. <laughs> See, the Holy Spirit won't make you do anything. And so many people think that the Holy Spirit's going to make them speak with tongues, and he's not. He will not. You have to yield to the Holy Ghost. Absolutely, it's called yielding. You have to yield to the Holy Ghost. You see, the, the disciples spoke with other tongues. They spoke, but he gave, the Holy Ghost gave the utterance. You understand that? Yes. He gives the bubbling. He gives the utterance. He gives the unction, whatever you want to call it. But you've got to yield your tongue and you've got to do the speaking and it'll flow right out of here. You understand that? Yes. He won't make you do it. Absolutely won't. And... Uh, so, so I was struggling with that for the longest time, longest time, weeks, 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 weeks. And I've told you this story before, but, but some of you may not have heard it. Maybe on social media you haven't heard it, but kind of a humorous thing. I was, I was running late for work. I worked at Hidden Valley Golf Course out in Eureka, that ski area, you know. 
and it used to be golf a golf course and I was I worked for the pro out there in the pro shop and uh, and so I was uh, running late for work and I was I shouldn't say this but I'll confess I was speeding has anybody ever sped a little bit <laughs> And I was going way too fast, and I came over that Times Beach Bridge on Highway 44 going west. And I came over that bridge, and just as I did, there was a police officer off to my right. He was kind of hidden, you know, they'll kind of tuck themselves in. And he, you could see he had the radar gun. He was radaring, and I was going way too fast. And when I saw that, I was going way too fast, and I saw that radar gun, and he shot me with that radar gun, and sitting right there in the car, I started speaking in tongues. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> And I've been speaking in tongues ever since, you know. And so over the years, as I've dealt with people who've had trouble speaking in tongues, I've humorously thought, well, I wish I could go get that radar gun, you know, and just shoot everybody that's had trouble speaking in tongues with the radar gun and get them to speaking in tongues. Well, I don't know what happened there. You know, radar gun won't make you speak in tongues. I don't know what happened there, but I start speaking in tongues. I, I think I, start, I went over into that prayer language and prayed, you know, the Holy Ghost can do a quick work because I should have got a ticket, but my prayers were answered. I don't know what I was praying in. I wasn't praying in English. I was praying in other tongues and, and it must have been something to do with don't get don't let that cop give me a ticket glory to God because he never pulled me over can you say amen? amen so it prays to be filled with the Holy Ghost you know I don't know what I was praying but it must have it worked whatever it was because I didn't get a ticket you know now I, I'm jokingly uh, telling you but that was my experience you have to yield to the Holy Ghost so back here to Cornelius's house while Peter was still speaking these words, this is Acts uh, 10, 44. The Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. See, they, they, they heard, they were born again, and then they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. They heard the gospel, they received it, they were eager to receive. They got born again, Holy Ghost in them, and then they got, he fell on them at the same time, and they got filled with the Holy Spirit. And notice uh, what happens here, verse 45, And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them, what? Speak with tongues and magnify God. Isn't that wonderful? And then Peter, now notice here, because some people teach that you have to be water baptized to be saved. You don't have to be water baptized to be saved. But saved people need to be water baptized. But notice here, this really hammers that home because these people now are born again, baptized with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. And notice he says, can anyone forbid water that these should not be water baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? Now that proves you don't have to be water baptized to be saved because these people were saved, baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. And then Peter says, go ahead and water baptize them. I believe in water baptism. You just don't have to be water baptized to be saved. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. So what am I doing here? I'm just trying to show you and anybody who's listening that there is an experience subsequent to salvation whereby you can be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I'd like to see a revival of the baptism in the Holy Ghost in, in, in the churches of America. Amen. I'd like to see a revival of the baptism in the Holy Ghost in the churches of America. I said, I'd like to see a revival. I'd like to see a revival. There's a power that's been lost over the last couple of decades. Slowly and slowly and slowly and slowly. Thank God for good messages. Thank God for good teaching. You know, thank God for it. Amen. You need to have a flow of the word of God. You need to have a flow of the word of God. See, if you have all you have is a flow of the word of God. Now, thank God for it. But if you don't have a flow of the Holy Spirit, you'll tend to, 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 to dry up just a little bit, you see. But you see, a lot of churches, there was a period of time back some decades ago where there was too much of a flow of the Holy Ghost and not enough teaching of the Word and some things got off a of squirrely, you see. Not that the Holy Ghost is squirrely, but if, you, if people are flowing, trying to flow, let's say it that way, trying to flow with the Holy Ghost without the teaching of the Word, you get off squirrely, you see. The Holy Ghost isn't squirrely, but people that try to flow with the Holy Spirit that don't have a teaching of the Word, it ends up squirrely every single time. See, we need a balance of, and, and that's what I've tried to do here over the last 27 years, is have a balance of the teaching of the Word of God and the flow of the Holy Ghost, you see. That's a real uh, New Testament uh, Book of Acts church, you see. 
you got the teaching of the word, that's at the forefront, but then you're open the flow with the Holy Ghost, and then you've got something, praise God. But over the last two decades, there's been a, there's been a waning of the teaching of the, uh, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and there's been a power that's been lost to so many churches, and you can see the results of it in our nation and in our politics and so on and so forth. We need a, we need a revival of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, praise God, based on the teaching of the word of God. Can you say amen? Amen. And you get that, you get the Word of God flowing first and you get the Holy Ghost flowing right in line because He'll always flow in line with the Word of God. Then you'll start seeing not only tongues, but you'll start seeing people come up out of wheelchairs. You'll start seeing glory to God, all kinds of healings, all kinds of miracles like we've had over the last 27 years. Praise God. We've seen cancer healed. Glory to God. We've seen all kinds of things go on around here. Praise God. Glory to God because there's been the teaching of the Word of God and a flow of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Can you say amen? amen? And I'm hungry for a resurgence of that. What about you? Amen. Praise God forevermore. And then let's go over to Acts 19. And then I'll begin to close. Acts the 19th chapter, verse 1. And it happened while Apollos, that was a teacher of the word of God, was at Corinth. And Paul, had, now notice the apostle Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And, fi and finding some disciples, notice, finding some disciples, which would be an indication that they're believers. Yes. Right? Yep. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? I like the way the King James puts it. He said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? What he's talking about, it bears itself out as you go on. He's talking about the baptism in the Holy Ghost. We know you get the Holy Ghost when you believe. He's not talking here about the new birth. He's talking about the baptism with the Spirit. Because, see, these people are already disciples. They're already born again. You understand that? He said, in verse 1, finding some disciples. I like the way the King, this is New King James, what I'm reading. But the King James says, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And he's talking because it bears itself out as we read on. He's talking about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And they said, said to him, we've not heard, we've not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Now, how many of you know this is really good news to us reading this? Because what it tells me, you don't need to know a whole, a whole lot to be saved. Amen. I said, you don't need to know a whole lot to be saved. Amen. These people knew who Jesus was, and that's about it <laughs> from my study of it. You don't need to know a whole lot to be saved. You just, it's not what you know, it's who you know. You know, you need to know Jesus. But they hadn't heard any, any teaching about the, the Holy Spirit. They, they, were, they were under John's baptism, of course. And they, 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 they heard that one was coming who was going to baptize. But apparently, see, they didn't have cell phones back in this hour. So news didn't travel as fast. They didn't have social media. They didn't have, you know, television and all of that news. So they hadn't heard. Uh, they didn't have the luxury of knowing what we know and having what we have. And he talks to them into what then you were baptized and into John's baptism. And I could talk for a long time on that. And then he says in verse four, Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him. See, so that's what these guys did. They did believe on Jesus and they were born again. That is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, now notice they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they were water baptized, see. And you say, well, why were they water baptized the second time? Well, from the way I would explain it is the first time they got water baptized, they had not yet been born again. And I've had people come to me over the years and they said I was water baptized in a church many years ago, pastor, but I really wasn't born again when I got water baptized, you know. Should I be water baptized again? And I'd advise it, you know. If you were baptized in water before you were born again, since you got born again, you ought to get water baptized again. Now, the water baptism won't save you, but, but uh, 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 water baptism is for believers, not for sinners. You understand that? Right. And so if you really study into the technicalities of this, these people were, were water baptized technically before they were born again. And that's why he told them to be water baptized again, see. But in the process of time, Jesus died on the cross, raised from the dead. And because they were believers, they got born again. Then he tells them, go ahead and get baptized, water baptized. But then I said all that to get to this. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's water baptized. And then notice this here. So these people now are born again, baptized in water. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. And notice what happened. They spoke with tongues and prophesied. 
And there were about 12 in all. So not a big crowd here, but, you know, uh, it doesn't matter the crowd size. Uh, the important thing here is that these people got baptized with the Holy Ghost. And do you see that uh, uh, he laid hands on them and the Holy Spirit came on them and they what? They spoke with tongues and prophesied. And it's interesting, one other example I could give you, how many remembers the Apostle Paul? He was Saul, then he got born again, he became Paul, is that right? Yes. And, and, and we understand that. Ananias came in, laid hands on him, and said, and, and ministered, well, let's just go over there real quickly, help, help me find that over in the book of Acts, over in the book of Acts, where uh, I think it's uh, uh, in Acts, the ninth chapter, uh, and notice here, uh, in Acts the ninth chapter, here in Acts nine seventeen, in Ananias, this was after Saul on the, was on the road to Damascus. He knocked down by the great light. He got born again, came into the city, and so on. He was blinded, you know, for three days, and or I believe it was, and so on. In verse seventeen, and, and Ananias, when he, when, this is Acts nine seventeen, and Ananias went his way and entered the house, and laying his hands on him. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and notice this and what and what and be what and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, he got born again. See, he called Jesus Lord on the road. He got born again on the road. And then Ananias says, receive your sight, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and arose and was baptized. So then he went and got water baptized. Thank God for it. And uh, so on and so forth. But we know uh, Paul spoke with tongues because he said over in the, in the Corinth, letters to the Corinthians, he said over there, he said, uh, I, I thank my God, I what? Speak with tongues more than, than y'all. Y'all. And you know he was Southern because he said y'all, right? <laughs> So you say, well, so, 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 so did I show you here today that there is an experience subsequent to salvation whereby you can be baptized with the Holy Ghost. It'll make you powerful witnesses and, and you begin to speak with tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Now I know, and I'll get into this as we go over the next several weeks, that the Bible talks about the tongues have ceased, but that's not talking about that tongues have ceased now. Tongues will cease when Jesus appears. He hasn't appeared yet. So we'll get into that as we go. Are you all excited about having a teaching over the next couple of weeks on the Holy Ghost? Because yes. see, when you, start, when you start getting into the Holy Ghost, and I'll close with this, go to 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. How am I doing for not having any notes? Am I doing okay? Yes. Ah, I've studied this so much over the years that it gets in you. That you shouldn't need notes after all, all, all the, even though I come with notes every service, you ought to be able to do this without notes at a certain point, right? So let's see, uh, Acts the 12th chapter. Now here's why you need the, the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And this is what I was missing in the Baptist church. Now I hope nobody thinks I'm running the Baptist down because I'm not. I love the Baptist. Thank God for the Baptist. And I'm still a Baptist at heart. I'm just a Baptist that got baptized with the Holy Ghost. And so I, I, I tell people when they ask me, they've asked me over the years, what kind of church are you? I tell them we're Baptocostal, praise God. I'm a Baptist that got baptized with the Holy Ghost. So notice 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Here's why you need the Holy Ghost. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, it's all about these spiritual gifts. This is what brings power to your life personally and power to a church. And uh, listen to this. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I don't, do not want you to be ignorant or unlearned. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away to these dumb, uh, dumb isles, however you were led. Uh, now, therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, let's get to verse 4. Now, here's why, you, here's why you need the Holy Ghost in your life. Here's why you need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Here's why you need the, the Spirit of God in, in, the, in the local church. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Verse 5, 1 Corinthians 12, 5. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit... 
Now here it is. The manifestation of the Spirit when the Holy Ghost is manifesting himself, here's how he does it. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Now, there, now notice, for the profit of all. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Now, I do want to say this. I feel strongly impressed of the Holy Spirit to say this. Doing this 27 years now, and here's one of the, the, the saddest commentaries on this subject of the manifestation of the Spirit. The manifestation of the Spirit is not just given to the pastor for ministry inside the four walls of the local church. And, and, and as I've lived this and watched not only this church, but many, many churches throughout the, the, the land, it seems like the mentality has been that the manifestation of the Spirit of God is only to be done through the pastor on Sunday morning or Wednesday night inside the four walls of the local church. And that is a sad commentary. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all, so the Holy Ghost ought to be moving in the local church. But the Holy Ghost ought to be moving in each of your lives during the week out there among the heathens and among the sinners making you powerful witnesses to them of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then they get born again and then you bring them to the local church. And you see, that's what that's, that's will cause a church to stay, stay vibrant and healthy, you see. Always an inflow of new people coming in. Can you say amen? amen. And, 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 and if all you have is the flow of the Holy Ghost inside a local church and it never gets out beyond that, and go back there to the day of Pentecost. See, they were in the upper room. There was 120 people in the upper room. And, and the Holy Ghost fell on them up there in that upper room. They got baptized with the Holy Ghost, spoke with tongues. But they didn't keep it inside the upper room. What did they do? They went out on the streets with it. You see that? And they were speaking in tongues, not just in the upper room or in the local church inside those four walls, but they're out on the street and the Holy Ghost is flowing and they're speaking with tongues and the power of God's flowing and people are getting saved 3,000. Can you say amen to that? See? But notice here, manifestation of the Spirit is given each one profit of all. Verse 8, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. Now as we go on down the road here the next several weeks, I'm going to talk about each of these and how they operate and how they ought to be operating in your life. As the Spirit wills. The word of wisdom, that has to do with future events. Wouldn't you like the Holy Ghost to show you things to come as it pertains to your future? And then uh, the word of knowledge. That's an important one. The word of knowledge through the same spirit. I'll talk about that to another faith. That's special faith. That's not your that's not what we'd call ordinary faith whereby you get saved. You know, this is this is special faith. This is this is the kind of faith that goes into operation. I've had that happen in here a few times where the, the, that, that special faith has come on me. And we've seen mighty working of miracles and, and gifts of healings go on. Glory to God to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healings by the same spirit. You see. Glory to God. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. Thank God for prophecy. To another, the discerning of spirits. I tell you, I can tell you about the discerning of spirits that happened in here. You've heard it before, but I'll say it in case somebody hasn't heard it watching on social media. But there was a girl that came in here many, many, many years ago. And she had anorexia nervosa and stood right there on that spot. And I knew prior her coming to the service that she'd been diagnosed with this. And you could see she was a member of the church. She was wasting away. She was down to skin and bones. Her parents came and talked to me and said, you know, this is what the doctors say. And, 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 and it's a dire report. And as I prayed and sought the Lord in the spirit, I could see in the spirit as I prayed, she was going to die. Not going to live. And, uh, and so we had a prayer line that morning. And, and, and she was down on this end. I started on that end because I didn't know what I was going to do when I got to her. I had no clue other than unless the Holy Ghost showed up and gave me something special. I was just going to have to pray a general prayer and go on. General prayer and go on. So I got down to her. And just as I stepped up in front of her, just as I stepped, you know, the Holy Ghost works suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. Holy Ghost works suddenly. You can't plan him out. You can't plan a service. That's why I like the Holy Ghost services because you can't, you can't orchestrate him. He orchestrates us. You understand that? 
And just as I stepped up in front of her, just as I stepped up in front of her, the discerning of spirits went into operation. And I knew by the Holy Spirit that there was a lying spirit that got, had gotten a hold of her mind. Not her spirit, but her mind. A lying spirit. Now, wait, wait, Pastor. It, wouldn't it be a spirit of anorexia nervosa? No, no, it was a lying spirit. And, and I, I'm, now I'm not smart enough to think this up, but I got to thinking about it later. Holy Ghost, I just knew it by the Spirit. There was a lying spirit that had got in her mind. And, 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 and I'm not saying that everybody that has anorexia nervosa has a lying spirit. Probably most of them don't. And, 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 and all of that. There's a medical side to it, but I was dealing with the spiritual side here. And, and I would have had no clue. But the Holy Spirit said there's a, there's a lying spirit in her mind. Now you think about it. Now I'm not smart enough to think, think this up. But you think about it. When, when a person with anorexia nervosa, they can be as, as thin as olive oil. You know who olive oil is? That's, that, 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 that's Popeye's girlfriend. Skin and bones. They can be skin and bones. They can look in the mirror and they can think and see that they are what? Fat. Fat. Lying spirit. We cat in the name of the Lord Jesus. We cast that out of her, off her mind, out of her mind, and instantly, uh, her the, the as soon as that thing left, that demonic thing left, the uh, countenance on her face changed immediately, immediately. And uh, now she didn't gain the weight back right there, but you could tell something was different. And so she went out and then left the service. You know. Still skin and bones, but, but something was different. That, that, that demonic lying spirit was gone. And let me tell you what. Let me tell you what. She started to gain weight and gain weight and gain weight. Praise God. And last I knew, she's doing just fine. Can you say amen to that? I think she's in the med, working in the medical arena or something. She's a chiropractor. Praise God for it. And now she's straightening other folk out. Glory to God. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. See, it, it, you have to have the Holy Ghost move and it can cost somebody their life or save somebody's life. Can you say amen? amen? So we'll talk about discerning spirits, different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. But one and the, and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Glory to God. And we could talk about the healing ministry for hours. And remember when I was on Jesus Healing Crusade, I documented some of the things that God did right in here. But it's, it's because we believe in the moving of the Holy Ghost. Do you get anything out of this today? Well, I just ask one thing that you stay in prayer for, for me over the next several weeks because I believe the Holy Ghost wants to draw some things out of me about his ministry uh, from the Word of God that's going to be just fresh and new right out of the Bible. Will you, will you do that? And come and be, in, be here and get in on these messages. Amen, amen. Now, if you're out there today on social media and you've never received Jesus, you've never been born of the Spirit, repent of your sins, cry out to Jesus. The Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Call on Him and He'll come into your heart and you'll get born again. And then, hey, if you want to get baptized with the Holy Ghost, just say, hey, Jesus, baptize me with the Holy Ghost. And just that quick, He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and you'll become a powerful witness for Him and you'll speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance. Now, if this tongues has kind of confused you, stick with me over the next several weeks and we'll take the word of God and we'll explain it all to you as best we can in Jesus name. Amen. Bye bye.